Hello and welcome. My name is John Hobby. Welcome to a Poker Chip Review, Episode 9 of the Great Poker Chip Adventure. Today we're talking about Nevada Jack. A pretty interesting set. How many people do you think are going to watch this in the first year? Four? All right, we're going to cut in four big blinds there. Let's just say that's that. And let's try out some new cards. We have some Jamaica cards here. By the way, <laughs> some of the, the things I go through for you guys. One of the reasons why I'm doing this poker chip adventure is because sometimes you have to cut through a lot of just kind of garbage and some poor distributors, retailers, suppliers, manufacturers, all of that. And it's already kind of hazy, the whole poker chip thing. It's like, what's a good set and what's not? Who's going to rip me off and who's not? For example, <laughs> I ordered some of these exact cards from one retailer who sells poker chips and various other things, and they sent me completely blatantly the wrong set. Um, was that an accident? You know, I doubt it because it was, you know, poker cards, poker size cards, and a set of bridge size cards, but just not the exact set I ordered, which is pretty irritating, you know. But I'm not a negative guy, and I'm not going to name names and be like, oh my gosh, this retailer is terrible. Either way, I shot him off an email about three weeks ago. No response from him, so can't, you know, recommend them. And I'm not going to, like, diss retailers or suppliers, but I will compliment the good ones. Focus on the good side here. Speaking of which, I also want to show you this. This is a sample of chips I got from a retailer and it's going along with that same thing. Look at how these showed up. These are literally <laughs> how they showed up. Look at this, just damaged everywhere. And they came loose like this in this box. That's how they came. No packing, no wrapping, no shrink wrapping, nothing. Just kicking around there. So was all that damage done shipping? Or was that done in you know the supplier's warehouse? You can see there are some fragments in here which suggest it was just poorly packed. So these chips, we're going to be, you know, a part, you know, along the lines of the custom series. But now, you know, there's just red flags all over the place. This didn't come from a retailer that actually shipped this from a supplier. So I think it was drop shipping. So this came from a different part of the country than the origins of that retailer. So, like I said, focus on the good. If I recommend a retailer, you'll know I have experience with them and have dealt with their customer service. So read the description always for where I recommend you get these products. All right, the Jamaica cards, we have our blinds there. Let's deal out a hand and see how we do. I'm just gonna expedite this real quick. Box, and then we'll call that good. All right, I'm actually gonna deal us out a hand here. If you want at home, um, deal yourself two cards off the top of your deck and you can compare it to this. All right, let's see what we have here. Oh, pocket threes. <laughs> All right, let's burn a card. Let's see how we do here. Oh, wow. Potentially uh, drawn a straight there. Wow, pretty weak hand still. Well, whatever. Interesting cards. Jamaica, 100% plastic. If you're familiar with the whole controversy about the cheating, allegedly... These, you know, are the consumer version of the Jamaica card, so they have the white border. So obviously you can't do edge sorting based off of the misprints on the edges here because it's just a white border. So that doesn't work. We'll talk more about these cards and many others in the money card series of videos that I'm going to produce where we discuss face cards. These are interesting 100% plastic cards. I'm glad that companies are making these 100% plastic playing card. You can see here, made in the USA with casino quality plastic. I can vouch for that so far from what I've seen. All right, Nevada Jack. Now, this is one of those sets that generates a lot of interest for lots of reasons. Let's go ahead and bring some sample sets in here and you can see what we're looking at. I guess we should throw in a one and a five here too. This is a ceramic set. And the first thing you guys know I always talk about is quality control. But before we get to that, the question on the lips of the nation. And literally, I've been inundated with absolutely no questions asking this. Would these chips be tougher than a blender? Well, let's go hook up the blender and find out. We will discuss that later on in the video blender versus nevada jack who's gonna win well we'll see 
um, quality control on these. Uh, first thing we always discuss is weight, width, and thickness. I'll throw the numbers up right there. You can see I haven't had any problems with thickness across denominations or you know, in the same set the set I have here. Width, thickness, all very normal. Spinners, all right, let's talk about spinners here for a minute. Um, when you get to ceramics, you can really discuss some real genuine spinners, like for example, these Nile Club right here. There you go, that's a real spinner. I use the term spinner and flatness kind of interchangeably, and that kind of bothers some people. I guess if you're being pedantic, technically you are correct. If there's one high point on a ceramic chip and it spins, that's more of the traditional definition of a spinner, not just, you know, an indication of flatness. So Nevada Jack, how does it compare? Well, I have had no like really bad spinners where the whole stack spins like you saw the Nile Club spin because of a high point in the chip. They have texturing on them. It's a kind of aggressive linen texture is how I would describe it, but I've had no real flatness issues with them. The dimples on them, well, before I get to the dimples, actually, let's talk about the edges. Dimples kind of go hand in hand with edges. The edges are not perfect. I have had a couple of edges where it looks like there are there's some very minor imperfections, whether it be they be slightly concave or just tiny imperfections that are visible when you look at them in the light just right with the glare. However, I cannot feel the imperfections. Same with the dimples. Now, for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, the dimples are just part of the manufacturing process, and there are kind of these little circle imperfections on the edges. Now, those are very minor. They don't peel, they don't come off, they don't scratch off. They're just little imperfections, and they're very hard to feel with your finger. So, for example, you grab a stack. Um, I have trouble finding those dimples on the, these sets for Nevada Jack, all right? So whether it be the ones, the fives, the sample set, they all are very clean dimples, all right? Now, all ceramics have them. Um, Nile Club have them. Nile Club are also very minor. Here's one right here. Not sure if that's going to show up. Can you see on the green edge mark right there, there's a little dimple. So all ceramics have them, Tiki Club. So these are very average so far across everything. The edges, I'm going to give them average, even though they're not perfect. You can see dimples right here too. Not sure if that's going to show up, but there are some dimples visible right there. One right here. So part of the manufacturing process. Now, <laughs> let's talk about other problems with ceramics centering. Now, all the ceramics, as I discussed in the scroll review, you can watch that review if you want. Um, all of these have centering issues. Now, the Nile Club do a good job disguising them because they designed it in such a way that it's hard to tell. Like, for example, this right edge mark is slightly thinner than this left edge mark, which means the image is slightly shifted to the right. All right, Nile Club has that issue. Not You can see not on all chips. Some of the chips are pretty well centered. And some of them are just, you can be really nitpicky and, oh, well, it's one thousandth of an inch off, not centered. To me, that's not really an issue. Here's one that's more off-centered. And to me, I mean, there's there's been a bunch of them when you step through these that are not centered. And it's not consistent either. Here's one that's slightly off-centered. You know, not a big deal. In my experience, this hasn't detracted from play of these chips. They're not so bad where you're just like, wow, that's terrible and you can't play with them. Just kind of live with them. Just be aware that they will be there. These aren't <laughs> jewelry level poker chips. They have to stop, you know, the line somewhere when it comes to quality control and printing tolerances. But like I said, uh, the Tiki Club have those problems. Nile Club have those problems. As I discussed in the scroll review, scroll poker chips have those problems. Um, it's usually, it's pretty easy to spot with the scrolls because those edge marks just get real thin real quick. Like right here. Thick edge mark right here. And then you look up at this one. This one's tiny just because it's not centered. It's just part of the manufacturing process. So overall quality control, we're going to give it average. Uh, and the last thing I probably should mention are the shoulders. The shoulders, in my experience, have been very consistent on the Nevada Jacks. It hasn't been so bad that you can't shuffle them or they take away from the overall feel of the chip. So quality control, I'm not worried about it. And for a lot of people, that's a big deal. So there you have it. <laughs> design. Now, design is something that really stands out with the Nevada Jack set here. Let's discuss kind of what we're looking at here. You'll notice that each denomination um, is color coded. So for example, on the 25, the outline around the text is green, whereas the one it's blue. I like that they made a blue one. One of my pals hates any other color besides white. In his mind, every single 
one should be white and anybody that makes any other different color is doing it wrong but i love the blues it's a throwback to no i forget if it was the mirage or the dunes i forget who it was but i have seen blue ones before in casinos and i loved them i'm like wow different something oh something exciting and i looked forward to seeing them just because they were interesting you know what i mean so i'm a big fan of the blue uh, maybe just out of spite. <laughs> Look, they're blue. But, you know, some of you won't like that. But it's part of the design. I should bring that up. You can see the color combinations right here. The 100, 500, 5,000, 1,000. An attractive set. Now, the image, now a lot of you are thinking, well, look at, well, the image is what really captures your attention. And you're absolutely right. If you're looking at the set, the first thing that jumps out at you is obviously the text and this big skull who's smoking a big fat cigar, and he has the dead man's hand. And I'm going to discuss, now I'm not trying to insult anybody's intelligence, there are some people who just don't know, alright? So, quick history. You know, it says Nevada Jack here, and it says Salute and Casino, right there underneath this hand, which is two aces, two eights, and a jack, alright? So you got two pair and a jack, and he has this bullet hole coming out of his forehead. This is representative of... Wild Bill Hickok. All right, now he's famous for the dead man's hand. He, you know, in the Dakota Territory, not in Las Vegas or anything, not Nevada, in the Dakota Territory, he was, you know, in a bar. Somebody came up behind, you know, shot him in the back of the head, and he was holding two aces and two eights. Now, I was raised with the rumor, and it might just be an old wives' tale, I don't know, but he, that he had the club and spade of both the eight and the aces, okay? So he had all, you know, spade, club, spade, club. But here they're showing heart and diamonds. I'm like, what, is that? Is that what it is? I don't know the historic, historical significance of it. I don't think it really matters. As far as I'm concerned, graphically, the red and black complement the chip, and I like it more. But just, you know, mentioning that, because there will be people who are very, very historically pedantic. Um, same with the Nevada, well, it was technically Dakota Territory, and his name wasn't Jack. But this is representative of a fictional casino called Nevada Jack Saluting Casino. All right? And they're just using the Wild Bill Hickok imagery there. Old West, you know, big cigar. Very interesting, all right? Now, I really like these graphics. However, I hate the graphics, if that makes sense. I love it that they made something interesting. I love that. To me, these are way more interesting than just your run-of-the-mill, oh, we're just going to make a ceramic chip, all right? I love that about it, and I love that it's love-hate. Even though I hate them, I still love it. One of the reasons why, and this may not apply to a lot of you, and that's why many of you are just going to purchase the set, but this is one of the reasons why I'm not going to purchase this set. Not because I don't like the design, not because, you know, I feel like it's poorly designed, but because we we're, we play. We have kids running around, all right? Now, can you imagine a seven-year-old relative coming running up to the table, and she's like, Huh, why is there this dead guy on there? Why are you playing with dead guys on skulls? I don't get it. And why is he smoking? Isn't smoking bad for you? And you're just like, ugh, great. Teaching experience, you know, and you have to sit down. All right, well, you know, this is the choices people make, and this is what's going on here, and this is what this, and then here's the historical facts of this. And Are you really, <laughs> are you really looking forward to doing that? A lot of you don't, like I said, a lot of you don't care, but there will be, you know, there will be some of you who will care, and this might just be a little too vulgar for the settings your your happy you know shampoo commercial settings that which is your life all right so just be aware that you know you need to get chips for your situation not just for this fantasy world that some people live in for example a lot of people say that my my taste like i love these tiki clubs are very is very immature which you know maybe maybe it is maybe i'm like peter pan never want to grow up but the design i just because the way it is designed i have to give it a very very good rating because it's very well designed um, I'll talk about that here a little bit in competitive options but excellent excellent design very happy with the design now it gets interesting <laughs> materials oh, let's cut back to the blender and see what happens At first, everything looked good, and then I realized, well, how come there is this cloud of dust in here? And I realized, oh, the blender lost that battle. Cheap blender. These chips were so hard that they just blew a hole in the side of it. 
All right, and right here, I have the results. This is exciting. Materials and durability and wear are all going to kind of be rolled into one here. So this, this is, these are the actual chips that were in there. There were four of them. And have a look. Okay, these were fast-moving steel blades that break up ice and stuff. And look at all the damage they've done. Very little. You can see the white blank in there. And these are much more dense than I initially thought. And obviously you can see some of the graphics have come off on the face there, some little scratches there. Uh, the chips are pretty noticeable. Very interesting the way these were damaged. And I'm, I'm really surprised at how hard they were. One of the reasons why I was surprised is they feel pretty soft. And I'm going to talk about why I feel that is right here in one second. Just a quick look. This is a really, really tough, tough plastic if it can do that to a blender with those steel blades moving around, all right? Now, one of the reasons why they felt soft is just because when I was playing with them and rubbing them together, they kind of felt like a softer plastic. And after we really um, put some wear on these, like when my friends find out that I'm reviewing a chip, they take these chips and they grind them together, all right, for long periods of time. And these developed, you know, kind of a smoother feel after you did that for a while. And I looked at this one in particular. Normally, on a normal chip that's not worn, um, you can see the texture when you get the glare just right in the light, all right? So you can see there's a texture, and then there's a little ring around the edge that's not textured. But on the ones that we were really putting a lot of wear on, that kind of smoothed out, that texture smoothed out, like right here I'm talking about. And you can see when you hold it up to the light that that texture is smoothed out. It seems like, this is my opinion, this is speculation, but it seems like they apply that texture after the chip is done printing because as that texture wears, it doesn't wear off the graphics from, you know, right here, you can see. That's been smoothed out, yet the coloration is still there. We know that it's a white blank. That's just how ceramics are made. And yet, it still holds its color. And so that, that texturing might be a softer plastic than the actual chip itself. Again, that's just my first impression, all right? I'm just trying to communicate how I feel about, you know, these materials to you and trying to communicate the feel of the chip. But it doesn't feel like it's such a different material that it's, it takes away from gameplay. It's, it's barely, barely noticeable, only if you, like, really, like me, are, you know, checking out the materials. So, <laughs> Nevada Jack 1, Blender 0. We have to grate materials very high then. And I'm not terribly worried about lead in these chips. Uh, they're a hard plastic. And you're not going to get, no, under normal use, maybe I, you know, if you're me, you might be concerned about lead content. But under normal use, you're not going to get this kind of damage or any dust coming off of these. Because unlike some other chips that feel more clayish, these don't wear in a fashion that's going to produce a lot of dust. All right. Materials. Good. Very happy with the materials. And durability and wear, same thing. You've seen the wear. These things will last you many, many, many years. Competitive options. Now, this is another part where we kind of need to discuss graphics. Now, you're pushing the $200 price range for a set of 300 Nevada Jack poker chips. That's pretty expensive. That's pushing, not quite as expensive, but that's pushing the cost of these Tiki clubs for a set of 300 or even a custom set of poker chips. You get over the $200 mark, you're in the custom ceramic chip range all of a sudden. Now, <laughs> bringing yourself back to reality, are you an artist and are you a graphic designer? It's very difficult to create artwork and transition that artwork into a radial design. Now, a chip is a circular object, right? And so if you just throw on you know, any art, it doesn't always blend very well. You can see that with like different tokens made for different events. Like I've been to a golf event where we all got like a ball marker and it was a chip and it was terrible. It was, it was a picture of a, a golf course or something and it didn't blend in and you're just like, ah, oh, this is terrible. But this does. Now this was done by a professional. You can tell because you look at the subtle cues, you know, that the, the head's round, the hat's round. You got this radial diamond pattern all the way around here. 
You know, it, and it's just wonderful. It's well balanced. You can see they put the cards on one side and they put the denomination on the other. And so you get this really photogenic balance. It's a well balanced chip. It's a well designed chip. It's a radial chip. They weren't afraid of a little white space right here to keep it simple. This is an excellent, you know, chip design. And if you think you can do better than this, uh, 90% of you, 95, maybe 99% of you could not make a chip designed this well. That's just the reality. I couldn't. I mean, <laughs> I have a little bit of videography, cinema, cinematic experience, and I'm not looking forward to trying to one-up this design. Very clean, interesting design. Now, the reason why I'm talking about this is if you're thinking, oh, I'm going to make a more exciting chip. Not that I made this. I'm, just, I'm saying like or, or you're talking about these two, for example, or even the scrolls, you know, or Nile Club. Hey, I can make a more interesting chip than any of those i would really like to see that because it's difficult to say the least all right so as far as cost and value go these are a really good value for your money because you're getting custom level graphics in a stock poker chip that's available through multiple retailers and so for that you know reason i can say you know for many of you this will be worth the extra money compared to some of like the scrolls or the Nile clubs, right? Now, as the making of this, I, uh, what is it? February, 2015, these, these are running between, uh, I can't, I'm surprised at the variety of prices I see online. They're running between, I would say about 120 and all the way up to 150 for a set of 300 of these. So you're looking to spend seven eighty, you know, to $50 more. 50 to 8 dollars more for some Nevada Jacks than for some of these. And for many of you it'll be worth it because you're looking at these designs and you get that blue one and you know it's more interesting than these. I can understand that. So competitive options that are less, you're looking at them. And then there are many options that, you know, are in the similar price range. These Tiki Clubs are just one example. Um if you go to some of the retailers, I'll list one down below. They have a quite an interesting selection of what they call stock ceramic poker chips, which are basically, it seems like they're in-house custom chips that are made through their suppliers. And then they just are the only retailer that carry those stock designs. So they're just, you know, the retailers, custom designs that are they're making available to the public. And the nice thing about ceramics is they offer that option to those retailers. So support them, read the description to see a couple of recommendations. All right. So competitive, you know, options, these do really well because of the design. The materials, you know, are pretty standard across the board. Now, all right, now we're getting to the part of the discussion that I'm not a huge fan of shuffling and other things. For, oh, for starters, because there are no thickness issues, these cut very well. All right, I don't even know how many I have there. I think I have six, yeah. Yeah, they cut well, no thickness issues, and they shuffle well. So we'll start small here for you guys. Ceramics have always, you know, kind of shuffled well. They can be a little slick. Not a huge issue. Oh, I botched that one. Do you see that one? There's a I doubled one up. Embarrassing on camera. Not, I'm just going to show the mistakes because when you're, you know, in a poker tournament, I mean, you're not going to have perfect shuffles all the time. Let's add some more. <laughs> I'm having fun doing this guys but this is not part of my purchase decision because as far as I'm concerned all the chips you see I doubled one up again as far as I'm concerned all chips that I've played with shuffle fine there's not like one I mean yeah sure some brand new Paulsons might be a little more difficult but as you break them in they shuffle like cake you know these shuffle very similar to any other ceramic gosh guys are you still watching I'm having so much fun doing this here let's add some more here we go I don't even know how many are in here 16 or something. Oh, I can tell you I already ruined it because I forced that. There you go. Not perfect, but they did shuffle. All right. And the other thing that it doesn't apply to my decision-making process is the uh, sound of the chips. Ceramics sound like ceramics to me. I'm not terribly worried about it. Well, that wasn't very good. So we'll do a, a sound test. We'll do with the competitive options first. Um, no, these are the <laughs> damaged blender ones here. Uh, I was looking for scroll. Here we go. Use these scrolls. 
Should we throw some Chipko's in here too? Chipko, according to a lot of people, and according to research I've done online, was bought out by Palm Gaming International. And I think they still make ceramics, but I've, you see things through like different websites and the white border is still available. And it seems like, uh, you know, I don't even want to go there, but we're going to use these two, see if you can tell the difference. We'll start with Nevada Jack. Aha, uh -huh, you see? A scroll snuck in there. There you go. Now we're going to start from the bottom and work our way up. Let's see if I can reach these dice chips. I may bump the tripod here. All right, dice chips. Representing the metal insert chips. I'm just going to do these Monte Carlos here. Let's make sure they're all Monte Carlo. Yep. And representing coin inlay. These actually are very different in the same price range as the Monte Carlo. Very different sounding chip. And we have the next gen here. All right, moving on up the food chain, let's do some Milanos and we'll get the Desert Palms out here as well. Compare some various clay chips here. And that's looking pretty good. Did I miss any? Oh, Paulson's. Sadly. Discontinued. I'm not sure if it's because of casino orders or maybe they're revamping their formula. We'll see. And there you have it. Nevada Jack. I'm pleased with this chipset. I can recommend this chipset to anybody. If you look at this, you like the design, you're aware of you know, you're gonna have some tiny centering issues, you're gonna have some tiny imperfections on the edges. Be aware of the limitations of ceramics. You're going to have those dimples. There's going to be one dimple on every chip. And there you have it. I mean, get them. Just be aware of the limitations. And one of the reasons why I make this, these videos is because remember at the beginning I showed you those chips that were all damaged, whether it be from shipping or the, or the supplier. You just really want to be careful when you try to, try to break through this haze, which is the, the poker chip market a lot of places are very secretive about who really makes their chips a lot of them are made in china and you know there's lots of debate are they made from the same factory and it all really comes down to quality control nevada jack has that squared away they're readily available and they, as far as i'm concerned they're proven on the marketplace it's not like you know that said i showed you earlier are they going to show up all damaged no no they got they got their their system squared away so if you have any comments if you've owned these for a long period of time and you'd like to share your thoughts about the Nevada Jack chips, please leave a comment. Or even if you just want to be funny, you know, those comments are always welcome here on this channel. So thanks for watching. My name is John Hobby, and I will be back in a few weeks with more exciting poker chip reviews.